Today we're going to be reacting to the current world record for Iron Trial solos that was just set by Apathy, a recently retired Call of Duty player that played in the CDL, called World League, professionally for almost a decade or even maybe over a decade. And I, I figured this would happen eventually, that these top players would get this opportunity to take a break from the CDL, whether they're retired or between the season, and they would come out and dominate some of these records. And today he officially took the, the solo world record. I'm sure it'll be broken, because as you'll see, there's a lot of opportunity within this gameplay um, to optimize it even further. Especially within this mode with specialists, you could probably get lucky and maybe get it really early on. Floor loot's good, so you can go ahead and kind of just run with that. You don't have to worry about it to get a loadout. But we'll go ahead and kind of react to it, break it down. I'm going to go ahead and leave a link down to his socials if you want to go ahead and check out his YouTube, which he started posting on more regularly, and then well as streaming pretty regularly as well. So he's come in, got a gun. Um, he's landing Superstore. I think there's might be some harder drops. The zone is a little bit more shifted to the top right, and you're going to see that what ends up happening in this playthrough is that a lot of the kills happen in clusters. One cluster here, a little bit cluster later on, and then end zone as we go throughout. Um, and it doesn't include a death, which slows it down a little bit, which I think could be optimized. Obviously, if you don't die, you could probably get a little bit further. Uh, I think somebody had 31, then 32, I think Mutex hit 36, and then this ends up getting more than 36 kills, which is pretty solid. This guy could not hear the mantle up. You know the audio at Super is really janky. There are a lot of bots, um, I would say, in the gameplay in general, just because when you kill um, almost 40 people, you're going to run into a handful of good players and then a handful of bots. Um, in the mix and then a bunch of average players in the middle just because that's kind of how the matchmaking works with LTMs like Iron Trials Solos where you're going to end up uh, having a little bit softer SBMM just because a lot of sweats aren't going to be playing this um, and some people are just going to queue up and they would love solos so that's all they're going to play so he's already got a couple kills it's uh, super the lobby only started with 129 players and it's just a matter of how you want to go ahead and take these gunfights. There's several scenarios. One is coming up right now where it being Iron Trials ends up saving him. He's going to get shot in the back here. He's going to get enough time to react, use his movement, jump back out, and take a different angle where the guy doesn't realize he's going to chow. Um, and that's the big difference. So right here, he could have probably been shot like a lot worse and be like, oh my god. But you have enough time to react in, in this mode. Obviously... In a regular battle royale, he probably still would have been fine because the guy only took off a plate and a half. But that's an example where if that guy was accurate enough, you, you, you get instantly deleted. You don't get a chance to react. And even though this is Iron Trials with the extra 100 health or 150 health or what is it, 150 health, you end up with scenarios if somebody just hits good headshots with the EM2, you get deleted. The C-58, you can get deleted. There's a few guns. MG-82, still getting deleted. Up close, MP5, OTS, you're going to get deleted. What he's talking about right now is, hey, do you even need a loadout? So what happens is, if you spend time getting a loadout, then you notice the same thing happens on Rebirth. If you're trying to go for high kills, you almost got to just work with floor loot. And in this particular case, it's really fortunate that the floor loot's good where you can actually use it in one-on-one -on -one engagements, 1v2 engagements, because of the extended mags. They basically made the ammo perfect here. He goes and takes that guy out. The guy hit him a couple times. The guy was like crouch walking. Um, let's go ahead and keep this going through. So you can see he's kind of chasing the red dots, and that's almost what you have to do. He doesn't have a lot of money, so he's got to push this pretty fast, knowing that he doesn't have a UAV. And the RNG element of this is that the lobby isn't killing each other fast. Um, and that's a huge part of it. And we'll see that. Um, I've kind of broken down the, the rotation, the zones, that we'll kind of see as a review at the end of the match. So you can see where most of the kills were, were gotten from and those types of things. And you're pretty much good to go. Um, but there's several gunfights because of the longer health. Even though you are like likely to survive if you're a better player you're also likely to take damage so in that particular case if it was regular br no iron trials he probably doesn't get hit there because he kills the guy before the guy lands the shot but because of the extra health the guy has a chance to react so it feels like he kind of has a chance in the gunfight and that's what's good about iron trials is there are actually gunfights in the vast majority of scenarios versus normally in the regular battle royale if I just position myself wisely, I could catch you in rotation. You're instant deleted. There's no chance. There's no 
ability to get to cover, nothing. And, and that's the problem with the TTKs. So he's going over here, we're gonna push this. There's a guy up top somewhere. You can kind of hear the footsteps. Comes up, he's like, where the hell is this guy? You can see the guy's flashlight on the wall. Comes down, pre-aims it. And the guy's like, what the hell? If you've ever been on the downstairs looking up, if you don't have NVIDIA filters or anything, that corner is a little bit darker and it's hard to see people. And that's sometimes a problem. He gets instantly deleted by this guy. I don't know this guy's stats, but this guy was ready for him. Like, almost too good. I'm not sure if the guy was a cheater, but it is what it is. He got instantly smoked. So here's the gulag. Comes out, just aims a guy. With the extra health, you can ego chow it pretty easily. So he's gonna just go right back for his loot. Um, it it kind of sucks because in Iron Trials, there's not really an opportunity to regain, but he's just gonna go back. If his loot's still there, then he gets it. If not, then you know he dies and resets up uh, cues for another time. So here's an extra step where it could have been a little bit more optimized. If he doesn't die there, he realizes that guy's there, gets the kill. He goes right into rotation. So essentially by going the gulag, he lost almost two minutes of kills, which could have potentially moved him to the next area. He kills that guy, he doesn't lose his money. So I, I would imagine that somebody, when they finally set this record, like before the mode is gone by the weekend, um, somebody's gonna probably get 50. I don't know who that person is, but I think it's very possible, especially if you get specialist bonus in the early on um, and things flow the right way, it works out really well. So going back to, to Apathy, uh, I've seen them play for quite a while in the CDL. Obviously, they play on LAN um, in tournaments, and they're playing against the best of the best. Day in and day out, 8 to 10 hours a day, like literally as their job. So a lot of these guys, when they are retiring and they are like stepping away from CDL, uh, for several different reasons. One, it might be burnout. Two, the league's getting more small and competitive where there's just not as many spots, and there's... 18 year olds coming to the league every single day. Um, they're able to transition to Warzone pretty easily because all the mechanics are exactly the same as when they play to the, the pro league. So he comes out, gets a good timing here. That guy probably didn't see him. Maybe it was a console player, FOV, got that guy. So there's still a guy who has a bounty on him. You can see the vehicle, the guy is driving away. He's already up at 11 kills with 62 up. And the unfortunate part is you really can't die. Um, because he's already lost his gulag. There's no buyback. So you really have to be able to be aggressive, but also get lucky that you're not getting shot. But luck is less important. This guy doesn't have a gun. He was going to go for a melee. So lucky on him that that guy uh, didn't decide to actually take a gunfight. But I don't think the guy... Well, the guy had a PPSH. What is he doing? He should have just ADS'd him, but he was going for a melee. Imagine trying to melee when you have a gun instead of actually having a gunfight in a first-person shooter. That's besides the point. So yeah, the more and more of these guys that kind of step away, you see them dominate. Um, you have people like Tommy, um, who's a professional player. Almin uh, Noobs, he was on the amateur side, and he's a monster at this game. And there's a lot of those guys. Skump has transitioned super well. Obviously, he still plays professionally. Professionally, Crim6, uh, Priesta, Tat. I mean, I can go down the line, but pretty much all the pros, and they're nasty at this game. Um, and if there wasn't a CDL and they could play this full time without having any other obligations, I think uh, you would see that most of their world records that are currently stand could be broken by these guys because when there's only like 48 people in a league, it gets pretty disgusting. So he's able to catch that guy. I don't know why that guy chowed so quick. Kind of a dumb push. Uh, maybe he thought he was going to chase him all the way up. But didn't expect like a good player would just pre-aim that. So it worked out really well. So here's another spot where he takes some damage. And sometimes like in a real battle royale, you'd be like, I mean real, but the normal battle royale health, you'd probably be a little bit more nervous. Like, oh shoot, I took damage. I'm about to die. But in Iron Trials, you can ego challenge a lot of things. So there's a guy, he breaks the window. Doesn't hit the shots there because the guy's in the corner. Still a little hard to see. But one thing I will point out is obviously I'm watching back a stream. Um, the quality of this person's video on their screen is significantly better. So whatever you see in a live stream, the actual clarity is significantly better. If I actually pointed my camera and my screen and like you could see it like versus live stream, it's just so, like if I took pictures, 
how clear the actual monitor is is night and day different compared to what you get in a live stream. So he's coming out over here. This guy's going to track the vehicle. He gets baited. That's a common bait switch strat that a lot of people use, especially in Battle Royale solos. You drive up, you jump out, the person tracks the vehicle because it's hard to react, and then you don't really spot where the player is because the mechanics are truly unrealistic in, in the, the Battle Royale. It's just unrealistic to be able to jump out of the vehicle at 30 or 40 miles per hour or whatever uh, you know that is in um, metric time. He comes through. The guy got prone blocked. Like a, like a bot, he got prone blocked. He was too close to the wall. And that's kind of how that went. He's gonna swap vehicles, get new health. So luckily, most of the engagements he's gotten in, he's been able to get enough money to get the next UAV. And within this mode, since the regains are so difficult, there's no free loadout. The cost of a loadout is absurd. Um, you end up with a scenario where so many people do not have ghosts. So there's a guy behind him, plus there's a guy over here. At, there's like two or three on this side. And then there's a guy inside this building. He's kind of ADSing. He's focused on the other vehicle. That guy might even been AFK. I think this guy is AFK. He's not even, he doesn't even move. He has an advanced UAV. That guy might have been AFK. Or he was looking at this other dude. So you can see he's resetting the gunfight. He's coming back to full health. He's got clustered. A little bit dangerous cluster here because it's like landing on his head. But I don't know which direction it's hitting in because it didn't look like it was close enough. Resets the gunfight. Beaming the dude. Ends up managing to take this dude out in the vehicle. So he takes that guy out. He still has a little bit of uh, money, but not enough to get another UAV. Decides to go back and loot these bodies. So you can see kind of how the transition went. Super Story kind of worked that area. And then he transitioned through Factory up through neighborhood then to stadium and stadiums where he's going to get a lot of these kills um because like there's so many people here and look at how many people not only how many people are here but let's look at this really quick we'll go back a quick second so once he pops his advance you're gonna go ahead and see him zoom in really quick so right here there's several factors to consider right so What's going to end up happening is there's three, or was it one, two, potentially three right here. This guy has ghost. This guy has ghost, and he has the little up arrow. So there's two guys ghosted, so the advantage is huge. And then you have another guy over here, and then you have one, two, three, four, five, six people that are rotating essentially that way. So you have six plus the five here. That's 11 potential kills from this side of the zone. So it's a good to work this side. If he goes over here... Then he only gets the one kill, maybe two or three. But here, all of these people have to fight. But the, the, the risk is incredibly high. If you're playing for a win, you're not going over here. This is 100% a kill play to try and get as many kills as possible. Um, and hopefully, I would try to target these two ghost players. Um, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter because he doesn't have a heartbeat and he doesn't have UAVs. But ghost players are, are typically an issue. You can see the guy further left. He does have ghosts because it's only the dot and not the, the, the triangle. The problem sometimes with the advance is you don't know what level people are on unless they have ghosts. But in this particular case, you can't tell how high this, this current triangle is. Um, but you would assume it's above you because you don't hear them on your level. So he goes and works this area. Tries and try a different angle for it. You can see the guy to the right is a little below him. The guy's on his current level, so he's got to watch out for that guy on the left. Takes this guy out, and then now the advance is gone. But there should be one or two coming from this side, and then one or two coming from the other side. And that's the cool thing with this health, is you can actually bait your health and know that, hey, you know what, I have enough health to eat this. And you're able to reach out the gunfight. So you can almost take the damage as a, say, uh, like, uh, as a way of getting a, a UAV or locational information. So he's peeking. He's like, where the hell is this guy? The guy ends up being lower. You can see him on the bottom. He spotted him. He's going to come through. He ends up stealing this kill from the other guy, essentially. This guy didn't get killed. So anyone in solos that doesn't insta-die, you know they have a self-revive. So he comes out, gets the kill. A little bit thirsty for it, but comes in, cleans it up. Has a UAV. There's still one guy ghosted in this area that you got to be aware of. But there are two people popping up over here. He gets uh, the stim, which is... 
Incredibly important. You're going to see it comes in clutch. We're down to 30 players or so with 22 kills. He catches this guy in rotation. There is another guy he has to worry about. He's right on the other side of these steps. He might be right below him to the right. So the guy's coming up and around. He, he kind of waits. The guy comes up. You can hear the footsteps. He got bad timing. Weapon swap. Luckily, he was able to stim, get into it. That was a bit, been the end of the run. They are getting shot by someone else, so that guy did have a little bit lower health, I believe. So he has a gas mask, fully plated. Everything is reset, and he's kind of good to go. Just looking at guns. Since he never got a loadout, he's like, where the hell is this guy? This guy's got to be... Oh, there he saw the footsteps. Has a different angle. Ends up damaging and breaking the guy's armor, and then he's going to kind of full send that. You can see the vehicle's coming through. This is where there's like way too much going on. And I think he actually misses this next guy. Um, it's hard to say. He ends up getting a specialist bonus. So cool on that. Vehicle blows up. He takes a little bit of damage from that. There is a guy behind him that has to come through. He's like, where the hell is he? Easy little kill here. And then there's another one to the left. But there's still a ghosted player, I believe. So as he runs through this way, there's a guy that runs from left to right. Which I think he's focused on the optic right here on the left. Right there, there's a guy jumping in, but I think he was focused right here, so his eyes didn't catch this. Also, this guy blends in really well. So he jumps down. I would have kind of maybe gone to the left, but maybe he didn't see him. That's what happens in everything in real time. He's like focusing on this dude, and he gets lucky that this guy runs out in front of him, and he's able to shoot him in the back. Unfortunately, he was using the OTS at that range, which doesn't kill that fast, so he worked out. There's still the one he's got to worry about on the left that's going to hold him. He takes a little bit of damage there, but he just barely broke armor. He knew he broke the guy's armor plus some, so it was a comfortable ego child. You know you have the health battle won, and you just got to get into the zone. So now this area is clear. He needs nine more kills for the record because 36 was the record before this, um, and there's still 20 up, so this is really good odds. Um... And you need a little bit of RNG that they're not going to fight and kill each other. Because if they kill each other, then there's less kills, right? So it kind of makes it a little bit difficult. The other problem is there's no buy right here. Yeah, so so it's kind of like having 30 grand reduced buys because you have a specialist bonus um, and not being able to get the kills. So he's like kind of checking out what's going on, debating if he wants to go to get this vehicle. Because vehicles are great in rotation, especially if you're going for records. You can't play smart. Like you can play smart to a certain extent. But you can't play, like, perfectly smart because if you're playing smart, you're going to play slower, which is smarter. Um, you have to play dumb in a, in a certain extent and ego chow stuff and, and rely on just your raw gun skill movement to win these gunfights and a little bit of luck. Um, so that's where it's coming in. He's trying to third party here. If he actually does this opposite, he probably gets both of the kills, but he only got one. He could have probably shot the one in the back. He acknowledges, he's like, damn, I should have shot the one in the back. Even though the smart play was to shoot the other one first. It's just kind of how it goes. You shoot the one that could potentially be looking at you, and then once you kill that one, you would have rotated the one that's looking away because that's a lower threat, right? And then he has to turn around, figure out where you're at. You can see the footsteps, so it's super easy to track where they are. The guy just put down the munitions. See, so this guy was kind of dumb. I'll be honest. When you throw down the munitions, what I would have been doing is sh aiming at the munitions. If the guy comes around the corner, you shoot it, it instantly blows up, and you would you would destroy them. Yeah, it's kind of broken. But that's another strat. Don't use it on me. Uh, but yeah, that thing is pretty crazy. So there's nine players left. He needs six kills for the record. He comes through. Just ends up using raw gun skill on that dude. Um, sometimes what people don't realize is when somebody's camping... There's usually latency or server desync. So the person being aggressive usually have the peeker's advantage. So when he came through, he kind of saw the guy. And by the time he was taking damage, he was able to already get on the guy. Versus the guy who's reacting is a little bit slower, you know? It's just kind of how it goes. Because you have to react to this guy coming in. Versus him, he's looking for someone. So he's like already in, engaged in that mode. So there's two here. You can see kind of where the guy was. He comes through based off the mini-map. And then there's another one right over here. Kind of gets stuck, like, mantling right here. But either way, it kind of worked out that the guy, like... 
He's like, hopefully they don't know where I'm at. A lot of times players, they're not going to know that you have a UAV in the air. So they're just assuming, hey, if I crouch walk, I might be able to come around here. People are really, uh, people really tend to avoid gunfights. So he has two on the left, one behind him, and then one on the farther right. And there's five people up. So he's coming through. There is one above him, and then there's one below him on the outside of the building. So this guy's right above, and the gas is closing. Comes through. He just kind of pre-checks where the guy should be. He's got to climb the ladder, has a golden gas mask, so he's still okay there, or durable. There's the one on the left, and then two on the right, and maybe one has ghost? Yeah, because the one on the right, you can see it has the down arrow. So this guy... He's like, ah, oh, no! That's what sucks with the OTS at range, it's not great. It's a barrel stuff machine. So you can see the footsteps on the ground. So you can see the guy rotated across, comes through, takes that guy out. The last two are fighting, but they end up one kills the other. So there it goes. He's like, damn, now it's a 1v1 for the world record. Let's get it. So he's like, I don't know where the guy is. He kind of had an idea where the guy was in that hut because that guy was on the map. So as soon as he saw something, boom. Like I said, in this particular view, it's probably a little dark and grainy just because it's a stream quality instead of the actual quality. Throws a nade. So even that nade where he crouches to throw the other nade, he gets cover. A lot of times people stand out in the open. The guy's sprinting around the corner. He takes him out. Pretty crazy. Good to go. Let's go ahead and look at the heat map. So like I said, definitely go check out Apathy over on Twitch or on YouTube. Both will be linked down in the description. I want to just kind of go over the general rotation. You can see he had kind of a slower start. Only had about six or seven kills. One is Gulag. Died right here. Uh, but then you can see as he rotated, kind of a little bit of a dead space. Got a cluster of kills over at Neighborhood and Stadium with that rotation. And then finished off with a little cluster here. And that's really what it's going to be working down to. This zone, I think, helps helped a little bit because so many people that landed in downtown hospital park port had to rotate through this bottom section there were obviously people that rotated through farmland and lumber but they ended up making it up to this top section where he ended up clearing those out as well got lucky with an advance ended up getting a specialist bonus could have got that way back here and would have been better set off for the run for discounts on uavs which is clutch to take on a lot of people that are going to be rocking ghosts. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, learned something new. If you did, please do me a favor, hit the like button. Brand new, want to find your way back. Double check, make sure you are subscribed with notifications on. Thank you for watching. As always, have a great day.